guys, we are going to start off today doing some uh, review of what we finished doing at the end of last class. Please recall that most of what we covered at the beginning of this chapter was on the topic of buffer systems. Okay? Can you tell me, see if you remember, what is the purpose of a buffer system? Yeah, Melanie. No yeah, to keep the pH constant, to keep the pH steady, whatever that pH is. And we gave the example of you have lots of buffer systems in your body, in your bloodstream, that prevent you, know, you from having something with lemon juice in it and that killing you because it drops your pH significantly. Okay? The last thing that we did at the end of that of last class was looking at not just a buffer system, but what if you start adding things into that buffer system? What if you start testing that buffer system by adding a strong acid or a strong base, and we didn't do any math with it, we just predicted what the reaction will be, right? And we're gonna review that right now. Okay, let's look at this first problem. We're gonna do this one together. It says, write the reaction, no math. In fact, the math that would be associated with this type of problem has been taken off the AP exam. Okay, so all we're gonna focus on is writing the reaction. Write the reaction that occurs when NaOH, stop there, acid, base, salt, what is this? Base, what type of base? Strong base, okay. When this strong base is added to the following buffer system, okay, well guys, this particular problem, they're telling you this is a buffer system, but if this were a test question, this word buffer would probably not be there. It would just say to the following solution. Let's just review how to even recognize a buffer system in the first place. Okay? What is this? Acid, base, salt, what is it? Acid, strong or weak? Weak. I think anybody that said strong, you might be confusing this with HNO3, which is nitric. This is nitrous acid. What is this? A salt. Do you see anything that the salt and the acid have in common? NO2. NO2 minus the nitrite ion is the conjugate base of that weak acid. And ladies and gentlemen, that's what a buffer is. A system that has a weak acid and its conjugate base present at the same time in the same container. Okay, well, what's the first thing we do? When we've got more than one compound in a problem, what should we do? List out our major species. Okay, great. What's always present? H2O, our faithful friend. Okay, how should I deal with this NaOH, right? It, should I keep it together, split it up? What should I do? Why split it? Okay, and why is that? It's a strong base. Strong things split up. Somebody in another class said that she remembers that because strong people like to be independent. <laughs> Okay, whereas weak things, weak people, need to be with other people. That's probably not politically correct, but, okay. What about this compound? What should I do with it? Keep it together or split it? Why keep it together? It's a weak acid. What about this one? Why break it apart? It's a salt. Now, 
do you all see that NA plus has actually already been written? You don't, you can write it twice if you want to, you don't need to. So I'm going to split this up, I'm not going to write the NA plus, I'm just going to write NO2 minus. Okay, now, five major species to deal with. Remember that what we're looking for is a neutralization reaction, an acid plus a base. Can you please tell me what in this list, what are my candidates for things that could donate a hydrogen, could be an acid? Okay, water, what else? HNO2, anything else? Nope. These are the only two possible acids. Do you remember how you decide which one? No. I'm not asking which one are you, do you choose. I'm asking how do you even know which one to choose? The stronger one. Another way you could ask yourself the question is, which one is more acidic? Water or nitrous acid? Nitrous acid. It sound, when you say it like that. Yeah. Well, sounds that's what you need to ask yourself. Okay. What are my candidates for bases in this list? Okay. Water. What else? What else? Okay. Which base are you going to choose? Why is that? The king, the king daddy. He's the king daddy. <laughs> okay? Great. Now, guys, a few people last class said, you know, I, I feel like I've, I've got a bit of a handle on how to choose the reactants, but sometimes I'm not sure what the products are. Don't overcomplicate it. Remind yourself what are our, our definitions, our fundamental definitions of things. What do acids do? Donate a hydrogen. Okay, so do it. This guy's gonna give away a hydrogen. Where is it gonna go? To the other reactant. Okay, you don't ever have to guess. You can just think about your definition. Again, all we're doing is writing the reaction. I want you to try writing the reaction for number two on your own. Try it. is usually going to be pretty easy to pick. Why did we pick H+, because it's the king daddy of acids. Now, NH3 might have been a little more challenging to pick. For bases, our options were water, Cl- and NH3. Okay, here is, Paul, here's an example of what you were talking about, all right? You have three things to choose from, okay? All three are capable of being bases. You may have had questions in your problem set asking you to compare, for example, these two. Which is the stronger base? Here is why this is not going to be my choice. Or sorry, you guys tell me. Okay. For two reasons. Number one, if I put the Cl minus in here, it would form HCl, which is a strong acid, and strong acids don't like to form. Okay, they dissociate. Here's the other reason. 
tell me this. Isn't Cl minus the conjugate base of a strong acid? Yes. Okay. Conjugate bases of strong things, strong acids, are incredibly weak. Weaker than water. Okay. We don't have Ka values for strong acids, but let's pretend that we did. If HCl has a Ka value of like 1 times 10 to the 100th power, which it basically would, the Kb value for this is going to be really small, like 1 times 10 to the negative 85th power. Wouldn't you agree that that is a smaller Kb value than 1 times 10 to the negative 14? Yes. Yes. Other questions? Because guys, this is the hard part. Figuring out what the reaction is, that is, I personally think, the most challenging part of this chapter. All right. Now, what else can we talk about with buffers? There is a term called the buffering capacity. And I told you a very morbid story last class about a person overpowering the buffers in their body. Okay. Okay. The word, the term buffering capacity represents how much strong acid or strong base a buffer can absorb without significantly changing the pH. Okay. Remember, buffers are not all powerful. They can hold pH very steady, but if you add enough strong acid or enough strong base, you can overpower their buffering capacity. Now, what determines how much a buffer can take? Well, if you would, take out your equation sheet, and I want you to look at that equation we used last class. It's called the Henderson-Hasselbach. Remember, I call it hendy -Hoss. I want you to look at it. And look at the right-hand side of that equation, where it says log of A minus over HA. Folks, a buffer's capacity is ultimately determined by that ratio. Now remember a few things about this equation. When is the only time it's okay to use this equation? Buffer. If you've got a buffer. Okay? How much a buffer can handle is ultimately determined by the molarities of these two things. Now let's just review what these things represent. Remember there are two types of buffers out there. Some buffers contain a weak acid and its conjugate base. The other type of buffer would be a weak base and its conjugate acid. The molarities of those two parts determine how much a buffer can handle. Mm -hmm. Let me show you an example. Okay. Calculate the pH of each buffer system below. All right. First of all, what am I trying to represent here with this abbreviation? Acetate. Acetate. This is acetic acid. Strong or weak? Weak. What is this? Sodium acetate. Is this a buffer system, yes or no? Yes. Okay, big hint. It says buffer system below. But... On a test, that word's probably not going to be there. Weak acid, conjugate base, present at the same time in the same place. Okay, great. How do you calculate the pH of a buffer system? Like the one in this first bullet. How do you do that? Don't overthink it. You don't even have to write an equation. 
You plug it into Handy Hoss. Okay, great. pH equals, what's pKa? What does that mean? Negative log of the Ka, okay? Which is given to me right here. Plus log of base over acid. Be careful how you answer this question. In this first bullet, what is the base in this scenario? Careful how you answer. The acetate. Not sodium acetate, just the acetate ion. It's a conjugate base, but it's a base nonetheless. And what is its molarity? Five. What's the acid in this scenario? Acetic acid, and it also has a molarity of five. Hmm. Five over five is one. What's the log of one? Zero. Tell me what the pH is of this buffer system. Put it in your calculator. Four point four. Okay, we'll leave it at that. All right, great. Let's look at the second bullet. Same acid, same salt, same Ka value. You're right, there are, it does have different molarities. Calculate the pH. Why is it going to be the same thing? Yeah. 0.05 over 0.05, still going to be the log of 1. All right, great. So, fantastic. So, we've got the pH of each one of these buffer systems before we've put anything in it. Now, we're going to test it out. After HCl, what is this? Strong acid is added to each buffer system. The first one, this one, even after dumping in strong acid, look at the pH. Did it change? No! That is a fantastic buffer. That's a buffer doing its job and doing it well. Good buffer, good buffer. Okay? But look at the second one. The second buffer, after adding this acid, has this pH. Did it drop? Yes. It should have. We added some acid to it. Now this one didn't, because this was a really good buffer, but this one did. That may not look like a big drop to you, but if this is your body system, you're, you're dead. Okay? So, let's answer the question. Which one, buffer number one or number two, which one has the better buffering capacity? And why is that? Why is number one the answer? Okay, you're right. There's less change in the pH, but what's causing that? They're the exact same buffer. What's the difference? Oh. Oh, uh, I'll actually yeah, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, so a buffering system will then react the same way in both acids and bases, right? Correct. Correct. So Meg, what's the what's the difference here? Yeah. The difference is, and the reason why, ladies and gentlemen, the greater the molarities of your buffer's parts, the better its buffering capacity. It's like 
This first buffer is has more muscle tone. Okay? He's he's buffer! <laughs> That's hilarious! Good one! This buffer is buffer than that buffer. Okay? He can take more. He can absorb more abuse. Alright? Yes, sir. Sure. No, you're right. I can't just give you one buffer system and say, does this buffer have a good or bad buffering capacity? I have to give you two and ask you which one has the better. Okay? And the reason is, this one has greater molarities in its buffer system. All right, what else could you be asked in terms of a buffer? Or as my husband calls them, buffa, because he's from Massachusetts. And they, anybody up there, they take the R's off of the end of everything. Buffa. It's a buffa. Okay. All right, Let's, let me give you a hypothetical situation. You are my kind lab assistant. And I come to you and I say, dear kind lab assistant, please make me a buffer system that is going to hold the pH steady at a pH of 9. And you say, yes ma'am. And you get right to it. All right. How are you supposed to do that? Well, first of all, let me write that down. pH, the pH I want you to make a buffer to hold is a pH of 9. And I'm not just going to leave you out in the cold, I'm going to give you some choices. I'm going to put in front of you three possible buffer systems, A, B, or C. Let's read this statement. When choosing a buffer for a desired pH, I've told you the one I want is 9, Choose a buffer system whose pKa is close to the desired pH. Okay, fine. Let's say the buffer number, buffer letter A has a Ka value, and I'm just going to make this up. Just, I'm totally making these numbers up. Um, 5.6 times 10 to the negative second. This buffer system is 8.3 times 10 to the negative 13th. And buffer C, 1.3 times 10 to the negative 9th. Okay? What's pKa again? What is that? Negative log of the Ka. Okay, I don't have the math in front of me because I just made these numbers up. Please tell me the pKa value for this first buffer. 1.25? Is that right? Yeah, negative log of it. Okay. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Second one, 12.08, yeah, and the last one, 8.8, 8. 8.8, 8. 8, okay, cool, let me read it to you again. When choosing a buffer for a desired pH, choose a buffer system whose pKa is close to the desired pH. Which one are you gonna go with? The last one. <clears throat> okay? Now, let's say this is a free response question. You would have to be given these values. You would need to show what the pKa values are. And if you had to further explain why did you choose the one you did, would simply say because the pKa of buffer C had a value closest to the desired pH. Done. Okay. Now, 
could I put this on multiple choice where you don't have a calculator? Yes, I could. All right? Here's why. Do I expect you to do logs in your head? No. But for those of you that are mathematically gifted, you may have figured this out already. When you take the negative log of some number in scientific notation, the answer is going to come out to be very close to that exponent. Okay? So, could I give this to you in multiple choice? You bet. Would I expect you to be able to come up with these numbers? No, but I would expect you to be able to see that, oh, this is going to give me a pKa pretty close to 9, so that's the one I'm going to go with. Yes, sir? Um, uh, I just don't know this from a, like, a mathematical standpoint, mm -hmm. but uh, because 1 is the negative log of the pKa value, and 1 is and the pH is the negative log of the molarity mm -hmm. value, mm -hmm. does that mean something with a, like if the molarity of H is similar to the k value, then that would be Yes. 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 Exactly. If, and guys, this is a really good tool to use in multiple choice. If I give you an H plus concentration, and again, I'm just going to totally make up a number here. Let's say I have a concentration of 4.1 times 10 to the negative 10. Would I expect you to come up with the pH in your head? No, but you could tell me where it's going to be kind of near. What's it going to be near a pH of? 10. With just without a calculator, you should be able to look at this molarity and tell me that's going to be a basic solution. Wow. Who needs calculators? Okay. Yeah. All right, let's change gears. Can you refresh my memory? We have seen this word before. What does the word titration mean? Acid plus base in a lab setting, like you're actually doing an experiment where you're adding an acid plus a base. Okay, well, I'll tell you Someday, I have no idea when, but someday, far in the future, we will actually get to do a lab where we're going to do this. All right? And what this graph is showing you, this is a, a curve, a shape that we have seen before, okay? This graph is showing us a situation where we have a set amount of acid. Okay, it's not changing. I've got a some amount of acid in a flask, let's say. And I am adding, according to this x-axis here, progressively more and more and more base to this acid. What should be happening to the pH? It should be going up. And it does, but guys, it does not go up in a linear fashion. It goes up like this. And when we finally get to do these titrations, I find that people get very frustrated in this area, okay? Because, and I'm not just singling you out, okay? I'm like this too. We are people who like instant gratification. And when you're doing this part of the curve, you're adding, you know, significant amounts of base, like 50 milliliters of a strong base, and you're going to see the pH just barely climbing up. And you're going to be like, this is taking forever. And then you're going to put your hand up, Miss G, mine is broken. Ours isn't working. Okay, it's not, it's, the pH is not going up fast enough. Well, yes it is. Okay, it goes up slow. And, but don't be fooled, people. Don't get lazy and say, you know what, let's just start adding like massive amounts to get this to go faster. That's a bad idea. Because at a certain point, you're gonna get to where you will add one drop 
a droplet of base and you're gonna see the pH go and shoot up really fast, okay? And if you've been lazy and you've been just dumping in massive amounts of base, you're gonna miss this. And this is, this is key, this is the really important part of the graph. So you have to be careful. Why is that part the important part? Because of this term, it's where the equivalence point happens, okay? I want you to be aware your textbook calls it the stoichiometric, try saying that 10 times fast, the stoichiometric point, I'm gonna call it the equivalence point, the AP exam is gonna call it the equivalence point, but Stephen and Susan Zundahl, very cool, they like to call it that, All right? Well, what is it in the first place? Being at the equivalence point means this, write it down. Equivalence. Think about what the prefix equi means. Equal. Equal what? Equal moles. Okay, now remember the situation. We had a set amount of acid in our flask. Let's say we had 10 moles of acid in the flask. When we have added 10 moles of base, we are at the equivalence point. Now, this graph is saying to us that the pH at equivalence is 7. Will it always be 7? What do you think? No. no. However, this you can write down. If you are doing a titration between a strong acid and a strong base, the pH will be 7 at equivalence. Let me say that again. If your titration is between a strong acid and a strong base, the pH will be 7 at the equivalence point. If you start bringing in weak things into the mix, then that goes out the window. Okay? But for now, we're going to deal with what do you do in a strong, strong titration. Now, we are going to put some math to this, but before we do that, I gave you an acronym that I use. What did WMX stand for? Water, molarity, X. Okay, meaning a, what I call a WMX problem has water as one of the reactants. When you put an ice table underneath it, Molarities are the numbers that get put in and we're adding and subtracting X in that ice table. I'm going to introduce you to a new acronym and it is the only other one that we will use. I call them Newman problems. Newman. Okay. This first M stands for Neutralization, meaning water is not one of our reactants. It's an acid plus base reaction. Little m here does not stand for molality. Moles. We are going to do ice tables with neutralization reactions. But it's not molarities that will be put into the ice table, it's numbers of moles. And we won't be adding and subtracting X anymore. We'll be adding and subtracting actual numbers. Which is a good thing because, are you listening? You won't have to graph these. There's no X to solve for. These are quicker. Okay? So, again, 
you're going to be using all kinds of bizarre words. You're going to be like, oh, you just got to womix it and use the Hendy Haas. And oh, is that a Newman? What? And, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, let's look at this problem. It says we have a titration involving 40 milliliters, 0.2 molar, and what is this? Perchloric acid. Strong or weak? Strong. Strong. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a set amount of this acid. Hush. The amount of acid in this problem is not going to change. It's going to stay 40 milliliters the whole time. Okay, we're going to be adding to it, titration means adding something else, 0.1 molar KOH. What is this? A strong base. Okay, great. Calculate the pH after the following volumes of that strong base have been added. 0, 10, 40, 80, 100. All right, let's start off nice and simple. It doesn't mean we have zero milliliters of anything. It just means we have zero milliliters of base. So what do we have? This only. How do you find the pH of just that? Okay, why is it okay? Why don't you need an ice table or anything? Why is it okay to do that? It's a strong acid. pH equals negative log of the concentration. This is what you get. What do you think I'm going to ask you? Does it? Okay. Because what is it? It's just a strong acid and nothing else. It should be very low. Okay. Great. First part, done. Let's move on. Now I do have some base. Now guys, what do you think is a good idea when you start having not just one compound, but more than one compound? Nope, not ice table. Before that, major species. Tell me what they are. Okay, well, let's go with our faithful friend, H2O first. Then what? H plus, ClO4 minus, K plus, okay. Can you tell me what my reaction is going to be? Plus what? Oh, very good. Gives me what? H2O. Okay. Great. Now, now we can do an ice table. But guys, this is not a Womix problem. This is a Newman problem. I do not want molarities here. I want numbers of moles. Now, where am I looking in this slide to get information about H plus? Yes, because that's where it's coming from. How do you get moles from this information? No stoichiometry, come on now. Change this to liters, multiply, tell me what you get. Okay, 0 0.008 moles. Now folks, I'm gonna write something up here that is not 0 0.008 moles. And you don't have to go along with what I'm gonna do. You have a choice. If you wish, go right ahead and put 0 0.008 moles. I don't like the number 0 0.008. It bugs me. I don't like the dot. I don't like zeros. They bug me. Watch what I'm going to write. Come on in. Take a lesson. Yeah, we're doing ice tables. You'll love it. 
Here we go. I don't like moles. I like milli moles. Not mini moles. <laughs> milli moles. Oh, they're so adorable. It's a Newman. Folks, you don't have to do that. I'm telling you, this will be a time saver later on. But if that is un making you uncomfortable, then just stick with moles. 0.008 moles. I prefer millimoles because I think the number 8 is a lot friendlier than the number 0.008. But that's just me. I'm weird. I know. Okay? What about this guy? Where am I looking for information about this guy? KOH. Okay, great. I've got a volume. I've got a molarity. What should I put here? One millimole or 0 0.001 moles. Do we care about water? No. He's our faithful friend, but we kick him to the curb. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to circle this, re this reactant right here, okay? Newman, N-M-N. What did that last N stand for? Numbers. Numbers. I'm not going to put minus X minus X. No, no. I'm going to subtract actual numbers here. What number am I going to subtract? Watch. I'm going to subtract whatever number of the one I circled. Now, what is the one I circled? This is my limiting reactant. How did I know that? Okay. These two are in a one-to-one -one ratio, and I have less of this one. And what does it mean to be a limiting reactant? It means at the end of the reaction, how much do you have left of it? Zero. The math supports the theory. Okay. Great. I'm trying to find a pH. That's my ultimate goal here. What do you suggest I do here? Okay. Negative log, but that's not a molarity. That's a number of millimoles. So we turn it into a molarity. And this is why I like millimoles. Millimoles, you can divide by milliliters. And most of your volumes are going to be given to you in milliliters. It saves you the step of having to convert everything back to liters. Now be careful, what volume am I going to put here? Total volume. So 10 of the base plus 40 of the acid, so 50 milliliters. Millimoles divided by milliliters gives you molarity. So 0.14. Now can I get the pH? Negative log of that. Okay. Look at that pH compared to the one above it. Why is it going up? Because I'm adding base. Why is it going up slowly? Remember what the shape of that curve looks like? We're down here. Okay, We're in that part of the curve where it's going to go up, but it's going to go up very gradually. Okay. Now that seemed like a lot of work. The rest of this problem is going to go much, much faster. There's less and less and less to figure out as the problem goes on. Okay? But let's keep going. 
is the reaction going to be different? This one right here, will it change? Mm -hmm. No. I don't have to figure that out. There's other things I won't have to figure out as well. Remember that I said the amount of acid is not going to change. It's staying the same. It's staying constant throughout this whole problem. So I don't have to figure that out either. Tell me though, here we are, what is my amount of base? You can use moles or millimoles, I don't care which. Four millimoles. Which one is my limiting reactant? So H minus, I'm going to circle it. Minus four, minus four. This one ends up being zero. Same process. What was the total volume? 80. It's 40 of acid, 40 of base. So 80 milliliters, which gives me 0 0.05. Negative log of that number gives me this. Okay. It's going up, right? It should be. Is it going up a lot? No. But I'll bet you on the next one we're going to see a pretty dramatic change. Please make a note to yourself at this stage. This one has a name, the step. It's called the halfway point. The halfway point in the titration. Anybody want to guess? Halfway to what? The equivalence point. How would you know that? Well, let me show you. The thing that's remaining constant in this problem is the acid. Do you agree that its amount has been cut in half? Uh -huh. Say yes. 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 That is how you know you're at the halfway point. Marking our progress. Let's keep going. We're almost done. If you feel like you're getting the hang of this, don't wait for me. Keep going. This one is going to give us a different kind of final answer, though. of acid stays the same. How much of the base now? Eight millimoles. Hmm. Interesting. Which one's the limiting reactant? Neither or both, depending on how you look at it. guess what the pH is? Seven. Because what do we have left? The only thing present is water. Okay, make a note somewhere. This is the equivalence point. Okay, now remember what we I asked you to, I told you to write it down. Remember what equivalence point means. Moles of acid and base are equal. Okay. Now, the pH is 7. 
at equivalence, and that's because we had strong acid plus strong base. When we get to do problems like this with some part of it is weak, the pH at equivalence will not be 7. I want to show one other thing to you. It is no coincidence, people, that 40 milliliters got us to the halfway point. Doubling that gets us to the equivalence. That's not a coincidence. That will always be true. All right, almost finished. Last one. Same reaction. Same amount of acid. New amount of base. What's the limiting reactant here? H plus. That's different from all the others. So you have to be a little bit careful here. Very good. Yeah, very good. You don't have H plus left over. You have OH minus left over. So you should find first not the H plus concentration, but the OH concentration. That's right, find the POH. Total volume is 140 milliliters. saw another big jump because we were still in this really steep area. Whew, that was awesome. That was great. Now, let me, ans let me answer a question that some of you may be thinking. Will a test question, would an AP exam question look like this? No. Okay. Are they going to ask you to do five different additions within one titration? Absolutely not. Why did I make you do all this? Because you need to be able to see every possible scenario. I wanted you to see what happens when H plus is left over, when OH minus is left over. I wanted you to see where the halfway point is, what the equivalence point is. A test question is going to zero in on one of these situations, not all five. But they're not going to tell you where it is. They're not going to say this is at the beginning of a titration, or this is near the equivalence point, or it's towards the end. You're going to have to figure that out. How do you figure it out? By doing the math. 